Uh, Justin Fairfax is on the line with us. He is the Democratic nominee for the uh, uh, lieutenant governor of Virginia position. Um, also, consequentially, in the context of this morning's breaking news, he's a former federal prosecutor. Uh, the website Fairfax for, uh, do I have that LG, uh, Justin Fairfax? That's right, for Lieutenant, for LG, as in Lieutenant Governor. Ah, yeah, okay. For LG.com. There you go, Fairfax for LG.com. Got it. And people can tweet you at Fairfax Justin. Um, yeah, correct. So, uh, first of all, if we, if we can speak about the indictments that came down this morning and the guilty plea, uh, are you available and, and up to date on this stuff? Yeah, you know, I, I've been reading about it this morning, and Tom, let me start by saying uh, this is such a, a tragic day for our country. Uh, I think, you know, people every day get a reminder of uh, how much of a disaster the Trump administration is, and uh, and as a former federal prosecutor, uh, I'm intimately familiar uh, with the way the process works uh, with regard to going to grand juries and uh, having sealed indictments, and, and of course they were unsealed today. I also note I got information that there was a, a separate guilty plea announced today, uh, separate and apart from the Manafort indictment uh, of a foreign policy aid uh, to the Trump campaign. Uh, and so that shows that Bob Mueller, who I think is universally regarded as a very serious and thoughtful, uh, nonpartisan, um, you know, lawman, uh, is really doing a, a really wonderful job of being meticulous uh, in his team uh, and, you know, revealing the truth uh, of what happened uh, in this country uh, starting, you know, last year during the campaign. And so uh, I will be reading and watching very intently uh, for additional activity, but this is certainly not the end. This is only the beginning. Yeah. My, my preliminary take on, on what I think I'm seeing here is that, uh, you know, Manafort and, and, his, uh, and his business partner uh, basically got busted for one of the most stupid tax cheats I've ever seen. I mean, obviously this guy is qualified to lead the Republican National Committee uh, and, and the convention because, you know, he's, he's clearly a Republican. He's all about cheating on his taxes. 75 million, he goes overseas, uh, specifically to Ukraine, earns 75 million dollars in, in presumably consulting fees or whatever, and then doesn't report any of it, and then runs it through this bank in Cyprus that Wilbur Ross was one of the directors of to launder right. to himself. I mean, it's just like, you know, dumb criminal. But the, 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 yeah. the, uh, the indictment of Papadopoulos, um, where Papadopoulos, uh, this guy who is listed as a foreign policy advisor to Trump, um, and apparently is the guy who set up this Trump-Russia meeting in, in Trump Tower with uh, uh, J Jared Kushner mm -hmm. and, and Don Jr. and all this kind of stuff. Uh, this one is the one that looks to me like it's, you know, it, with regard to the to the, uh, to the Manafort stuff, it looks like they're just trying to lay on as much pressure as they possibly can. And my guess is that Manafort is saying, well, you know, Trump will pardon me and when all is said and done here. But with Papadopoulos, yeah. he's, he's, he's already pled guilty. So that means that this guy has flipped, right? Right. No, exactly. And, and you're right. And, and this is a very crucial and important distinction, Tom. Uh, you know, Papadopoulos actually has pled guilty. Uh, and so with, with Manafort and Gates, there was an indictment that was unsealed, and so those are the charges against them uh, with a guilty plea, and there was a criminal information, what's called an information. That means that the, uh, in this case, the defendant has consented uh, to that information being filed. Uh, that's the only way that you can do it, uh, to forego an indictment and is pleading guilty uh, to the charge. In this case, I believe uh, it's false statement, uh, 1001 charge, and so... Uh, you know, that is just the beginning of that process. Uh, oftentimes when you plead guilty to a criminal information in a larger uh, potential conspiracy like this, uh, you are cooperating with the government. Uh, and so I would, you know, expect, uh, based on my history as a federal prosecutor, that there are ongoing discussions about this and uh, that, uh, you know, they'll be getting more information, uh, likely from, uh, from Papadopoulos and and this, again, is not the end, it's just the beginning. And, and again, it's just such a shameful episode. Uh, you have the, the, the chairman, uh, in the case of Manafort, of a you know, presidential campaign, of Donald Trump's presidential campaign, uh, engaging in this kind of criminal behavior uh, is really, uh, really incredible um, and, and sad uh, for this country. And, you know, unfortunately, as you know, we are eight days away from a pivotal election here in Virginia. 
uh, where in some ways it is a huge referendum on Donald Trump, his administration, and, and the folks who uh, helped surround him. Uh, we have a ticket on the Republican side that has been endorsed and fully embraced by Donald Trump, and they have embraced him in turn. Uh, and so, you know, the country wants to go in a very different direction, and they have a shot on November the 7th in Virginia uh, to begin to end this political, you know, nightmare and eclipse in this country. Uh, but we need to make sure that everyone turns out to vote uh, on November 7th to do that. We're talking with Justin Fairfax. He's the 2017 Democratic nominee for the lieutenant governor of Virginia. His website, Fairfax for LG, as in lieutenant governor dot com, Fairfax, F-O-R-L-G dot com. Um, uh, Justin Fairfax, we have uh, about three minutes. You're a former federal prosecutor. I really appreciate yeah. your, your insights into these things. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, but if we can talk about the, the Virginia race for just a moment. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I spent part of the year in, in D.C., and I've been watching the ads in, this, uh, uh, in the governor's race here where Ed Gillespie right. is running this, this just flat-out Nixon Southern strategy, dog whistle, right. racist. That's not even a dog whistle. It's a bullhorn uh, campaign. Yeah, yeah. How are people responding to this in Virginia? I mean, I get the, what I, the sense I get... Uh, hanging around D.C. is that there's a lot of people who are just offended by it. But but I understand from the surveys, from the polls, that uh, the among Trump's white right-wing Fox-watching base, uh, this kind of racist campaign may actually be helping him. Well, you know what? It, it may help with a very small part of that kind of base. But but i got to tell you, Tom, it is, it's backfiring, and it's going to backfire big time uh, on Ed Gillespie and on their whole ticket. Uh, my opponent, Jill Vogel, has embraced the same kind of politics. Uh, she, in fact, uh, over the weekend, uh, I spoke to the NWCP state convention. She skipped that state convention, uh, blew them off, and instead chose to go campaign with Corey Stewart, uh, who, as you may recall, ran against Ed Gillespie in the primary, ran a pro-Confederacy, pro-Confederate flag campaign, uh, and narrowly uh, it came within you know, about 5,000 votes of, of defeating Ed Gillespie. And so uh, Ed, I think, has learned the wrong lesson, and so he's adopted uh, that, as you mentioned, Southern strategy, uh, very you know, race-baiting, fear-mongering, and, and so has my opponent, uh, Joe Vogel, so is you know, John Adams is running for uh, Attorney General. And, and so, you know, with myself, with Ralph Northam, who's a great man, uh, you know, uh, Lieutenant Governor currently, running for Governor, uh, Army Doctor, uh, you know, he uh, has been really, he's gone high, even as Ed Gillespie's gone low, and uh, we have done the same in our race, and, and as has Mark Herring, he's running for re-election to Attorney General. And so, you know, people realize that the ticket, the Republican ticket in Virginia, is Donald Trump's ticket. Uh, they're using Donald Trump's tactics and strategy, and and uh, they're rejecting that. In fact, Virginia has rejected it last year. Virginia is the only southern state uh, to have gone blue in 2016 in the presidential election. Uh, Secretary Clinton and Senator Tim Kaine won it by more than five percentage points. Uh, and so they reject that kind of hatred and, and xenophobia and bigotry, and, and they're going to do it again on November the 7th. And so... Uh, you know, there's been a clear contrast in our race between Justin Fairfax for lieutenant governor uh, and my opponent, uh, who also said in a debate, when you talk about dog whistle, uh, that she didn't believe I could, quote, talk intelligently about the issues. Uh, she said that in a debate. Uh, really? It's that kind of politics, absolutely. And, and we got endorsed, by the way, by the Washington Post and the Daily Press uh, over our opponent. But that's what she said. I mean, this is the kind of politics oh. they're engaging in. And she's, uh, you know, openly campaigning with Corey Stewart. And, and people have had enough of it. Uh, and so on November 7th, they have a chance to reject that kind of politics and to take this country in a very different direction from the Donald Trump administration. Yeah, this is the Republican Party showing their real face. It's amazing. Justin Fairfax, the website Fairfax for F-O-R-L-G, as in lieutenant governor. He's running for the lieutenant governor's job there in this great state of Virginia. Uh, and uh, you can tweet him at Fairfax Justin. Justin, thanks so much for being with us, sir. Tom, thanks so much for having me. Really great, appreciate it. Great talk. We'll be right back.